Hello all, so next let's do an interesting small project. Let's try to connect our Z port to Wi-Fi. Uh, for doing it, I am going to use ESP1 uh, module, which is using the ESP8266 uh, chip. Okay, uh, this is a very very cheap module like in India it's 245 that's like under four dollar It's available in any country if you search uh, You may get it from the original one from Adafruit or any of the ripoffs uh, All of them usually work. Okay, so we are going to use this one and we are planning to interface this with our Z port using the P mode interface now this module is very popular when we are using Arduino for connecting Arduino to Wi-Fi, but we can follow the same steps and we can actually interface our uh, Zinc chip also with Wi-Fi. So on Z port, you might have seen these connectors. They are called the P-mode connector, and there are a lot of peripherals uh, which Digitent is offering, which can be directly interfaced with this interface. Now our ESP module it cannot be directly plugged in here. Uh, because the distance between pins won't be matching. So you'll have to use some uh, male to female connectors to connect them. Okay, so you need ESP module, you need some male to female connectors, and we can directly use it. Out of these five, we are going to use this P mode connector called the JA1. Uh, you can use JB also. So out of five, you may be able to use three because two of them, they are differential. Anyway, we will be using this interface for uh, connecting to the ESP module. And when you are connecting, this is the pinout. So uh, this, is, uh, this is like the front view of this interface. You can see like there are 12 points to connect on the P mode connector. Out of 12 for every P mode, uh, two are used for VCC, it's supplying 3.3 volt, and two are ground. Okay, and remaining there are eight points to connect other signals. Uh, now, VCC is 3.3, that's the good news because our ESP module he also needs 3.3 as the uh, VCC, so that's a safe thing. Now, um, ESP it comes with an onboard microprocessor. So this can act like a standalone system, but our aim is to make it communicate with Zinc. So for communication, he can support both the UART interface as well as SPI interface. And we are going to use the UART interface for doing it. So when we are connecting it, this is how we are going to connect it. So uh, two pins should be connected to VCC. Good thing we have two points for VCC here. One is the real VCC, one is like a reset signal. So both should be connected to VCC and this pin to the ground. I'm showing with the front view of the module. So you'll be connecting using the pins on the back side. Okay, so connect accordingly. And these are the TX and RX pins for UART communication, which should be connected here as of now, because we are going to use these pins from the FPGA to track. So wherever we are connecting RX here, from Z port, from Zinc chip, this should be acting as his TX. And uh, wherever we are connecting TX from Zinc chip, which should be the RX interface of the UART. Okay, so this is the basic pinout. Now let's go ahead and start the project. So I'm starting a new project. Let's call it uh, that with Wi-Fi. And as usual, all settings as usual. Let's start a new block design. Uh, let's call it uh, that Wi-Fi or something. Okay, so some of these steps, uh, it's exactly same from a previous tutorial, uh, which is used for interfacing the Canuck 6 game. But my, my steps I will repeat. So basically, we are going to use the second UART interface present in the PS for controlling the ESP. Okay, so if you look at the processing system, it's called the Z Zing processing system. 
he has two UART interface inside PS. So I'll first run uh, block automation. And let's go to the block design. And if I go to MIO configuration, IO peripherals, you can see UART1 is already checked and that is connected to so called MIO, multiplexed input output. Uh, which is going through this interface and which is finally getting connected to our uh, UART to USB interface and finally to our PC. Okay, so you can see UART1 is checked here. Now we will go ahead and enable uh, UART0 also, the second UART interface, and we will connect it to so-called the EMIO interface, extended multiplexed input output. So what happens is the second UART, which is UART0, it will be routed to PL through through this channel okay so this uart will be routed like this and we'll be able to access it from the pl part also okay so once i check okay uh, you can see like uh, here uart zero also came out and this is the one we are going to connect to the esp chip so we have to connect it to the p mode interface so we have to make external these signals both of them and let's call it uh, let's call it just ESP DX and ESP Alex we don't need any other peripheral only this is required I check yeah so by default gp0 is enabled so he's complaining this clock is not connected anywhere so gp0 uh, we can just go ahead and disable that okay now if we check yeah he's happy so just save your block design uh, create hdl wrapper and synthesize it after that we'll have to do pin assignment for these two guys so first do synthesis okay synthesis is completed so we'll have to do the pin assignment uh, for doing pin assignment okay see here so the rx pin from esp module it is connected here so this should be the tx of the ui and this should be the rx of the uart so this is called ja1 pin so if you go to the user guide you will see like ja1 pin okay so that is y11 and ja1 is this one so that should be connected to rx here because it's connected to tx here okay so go here And this one, JA2, which is AA11. And pin standard should be CMOS 3.3, because that's the standard for ESP module. So just save it as an XDC file. And now just you can go ahead and generate bitstream. And that will complete the hardware design. This generation is completed, so we will just export our hardware to SDK now and we'll launch the SDK. Okay, we'll start a new application project and this time for the first time we are going to use C++ instead of C because this project it requires some string manipulation so if you use C++ we have the data type string which will make our coding much more easier. Okay, So just use C++ and let's call this again uh, zinc with Wi-Fi something 
Now, even if we are using C++, uh, the standard input output functions like C in, C out, they are not available here. We will have to still leave with uh, C printf printf or C out functions like that. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Empty application and finish. So first thing here we need to do is you need to go to this PSP settings because this I mentioned in the previous tutorial also. Because in this particular example we have two UART interfaces. So we'll have to tell SDK which interface is used as a standard input output and which is the other input right if you by, by default we usually have only one UART interface which is UART1 so it will be properly chosen here but once you enable UART0 that will be uh, list as the standard input output so if you use any printer function now instead of going it to the uh, terminal this will be going to our ESP module uh, that should not happen so you have to explicitly make UART1 as your standard input output okay so that is the first thing we need to do and now we can start our code uh, I already have the code so I'll just reuse it and we'll try to explain uh, what is going on okay so in this example I will write everything in a single file but next example We'll properly put it into uh, drivers and all. Uh, here, so these kind of files, they are familiar. Uh, as I mentioned, we are going to use some string operations. So we have to add this header file string uh, to our project. Now, uh, SDK may give a warning like unresolved inclusion. Uh, that depends maybe on SDK version. Again, this is a bug. In 2017, it is there. I don't know whether it is present in other versions also. So what you need to do is uh, you just close your SDK and go to the folder where your SDK is sitting. So this one SDK there under metadata, under plugins, delete this folder. Okay. Now this I got from signings forums and it seemed to work. So after deleting it, just relaunch SDK again if you are facing this issue. Otherwise, it's it's all fine. So now you can see like that warning has gone away and this is like our standard C program, C++ program, sorry. So we have to include this namespace std if we want to use the uh, string class. Okay. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to use uh, UART interface for communication between Zinc and our ESP module. And ESP module, uh, it can be controlled using so-called AT commands. So if you go to the documentation of AT commands, ESP, just search for ESP AT commands, uh, you can get a list of commands actually. So called the AT commands and uh, this is how we are going to communicate. So we need to send these commands as uh, strings or character by character through our UART interface through the ESP module. Uh, then only he will respond. Now, when you are sending, you have to send these characters and at the end of each character, you need to send a backslash R and backslash N, carriage return and new line characters also. Then only he will respond. Okay? That you need to always keep in mind because that is one error we usually face. Okay, fine. So first part, it's as usual. Since we are using second UART, we need to initialize that UART. That's what we are doing here you are zero we are initializing we are just printing welcome and this is where we are sending the first command okay so this command just means at so this command is used to check whether the esp module is properly connected or not so if you send e just at command that is not listed here simply at if you simply send at the esp module it will respond by sending okay if if everything is fine, he will respond with OK. Okay, So that's what I am trying to do. Again, there are so many. I will explain only the important one. So this function, if you see here, this is what it is happening. So you can see it is taking a string and it is checking what is the size of the string and it is calling this function. You are transmit byte in block mode. And if you look at that function, 
uh, what happens is if you simply use the signings function you want PS send this is the function from uh, you header of file uh, provided by signings uh, this function is non blocking that means he will return before sending uh, one byte okay so this while loop will make sure uh, the function is blocked until he completely sends a byte okay so we come here he take character by character and he called that function and he sends uh, byte by byte so it makes sure once you call this function esp send command it will return only after sending this end thing okay so he sends it so we have another function esp receive data again similar to this so here we have received data and uh, inside that we are calling another function called uart block receive okay inside that we are calling this function uart ps receive so again this is the standard signing function for reception again the issue is this is not blocking you call this function he just checks uh, any data is coming from uart if it is coming he may take it if it is not coming he will immediately return so that may cause issues so that's why again we have this while loop uh, which will make sure he waits until he gets some data now one issue with this uh, block case is if there is no data coming from UART, we will be stuck in the while loop forever so that's why we have this timeout guy so we remain in this loop like 50,000 you can change the value depends uh, for some time and wait for data to come and if we do not get data even within this time period the function will return okay so unless uh, unlike transmission transmission at some point he will definitely transmit but reception uh, it depends because if you send a command to esp uh, he will respond but uh, what will be the size of this response how many characters will be there uh, you won't be knowing beforehand so we cannot specify like wait until these many bytes are received we won't be able to see it so that's why this trick is used so we are waiting for some time and hopefully by this time uh, the next character will come and once he stops sending this guy will time out and we will eventually come back so that's the idea so we send this at command and this guy will respond and what we are checking is within that response so these are standard c++ a string method find we are checking whether there is the term okay within this receive data okay if okay is there we will just print esp detected otherwise something has gone wrong so next one next command is this one atw at plus cw mode uh, stands for current working mode one now this esp module it can work as a host like a server or a client or as an access point or all of them okay so if you put it as one he will work either as a server or client if we put it as two he will work as an access point like your wi-fi hotspot or if you put it as three he will work in both modes so we are aiming to work as a server so that's why this mode is one again we wait for response if there is okay within response we will say like configured as station next one is where you are actually connecting this to the wi-fi now one thing i forgot to mention when you buy esp by default the board rate is 115200 and in our sync ps also by default the board rate for both uart interfaces they are 115200 so if you come under general you can see both are running at 115200 okay so, but you can change the board rate here you can change the board rate for esp also you can increase or decrease uh, for changing the performance whatever it is so if you are doing it uh, you will have to change the board rate of our psuart interface also these two board rates should always work okay out of box ESP works at 115200 and here also we are at 115200 that's why I'm not sending that command fine so this is where we are connecting to Wi-Fi this is the command AT plus CWJP underscore current and you need to pass the name of your Wi-Fi SSID as well as password so these two things I have declared at the top now one important thing to remember whenever you give the Wi-Fi name 
it will be a string and the name should be put under quotes so that's why this additional backslash uh, quotes is there okay okay uh, because you cannot just put uh, quotes within a string so your wi-fi name as well as password should be within quotes when you are sending it so that's why this extra guys are there these are not part of my uh, ssid or password so you should also put these extra guys otherwise he won't work okay so we are passing the ssid and password and again these two character and you we need to wait for some time because he may take some time to connect to wi-fi uh, so if you try to check the response before that you may either won't get any response or he may say like bc so that's why we have put 10 second delay here we check the response and within the response if there is a string called connected we will say like okay successfully connected after that we need to get the ip address of our modules because if you want to do any communication or wi-fi you need to know the ip address of the server so this is that command we send that command and uh, we will get a response and that's a big response i will show you and this is a technique used for extracting only the ip part from them okay so in the response the ip part will always start with a quote so we are searching for that quote and once we find that quote we will search only for dot or digit because these are the parts of the ip okay so we extract only that part and we will print it and we will get the ip address and you need to send this command cip max equal to one if you want to uh, enable any server http server using esp module this command should be issued that's a must so we issue it uh, we just get a response we are not checking the response it doesn't matter after that this command cip server 180 this will start an http server on esp at port number 80 okay so here he starts a server and we just print like status server after that we just call this function loop and so this much is the initialization part okay this you have to do only once for initial configuration when we power it up after that he acts as a server and he is waiting for any request from any client so in this case we can use a web browser also as a client uh, now this style is again motivated by arduino coding so in arduino this much you will write in the initialization part then uh, we will have a loop an infinite loop where he will constantly wait for any request from any client okay so this is just an infinite loop you can see like this is a while one it's an infinite loop what he is doing is he is infinitely waiting for some data from esp and esp will be getting some data when somebody is trying to connect to our esp using his ip code using his ip so once he gets some data what we are doing is within that data we will search for this one ipd so whenever a client connects to the server each connection will give an a unique number now the esp module one uh, at a given time he can have maximum four parallel connection up to four connections all of them can be from same client or from a different client okay so what esp does is he will abstract all the client information like his ip address his mac address everything from you and he will just give you a so-called a channel number so whenever you want to respond to that request okay you should use the same channel number so that esp will take care of the remaining packet formation and all uh, he will take care of it you don't have to worry about uh, any of the, the tcp ip packet details so what we are doing is we just wait for this part whenever we get a data from esp and uh, whatever is following this is the channel number okay so that's why we are doing this one uh, found plus four because we are skipping one two three four characters here whatever is following that is the channel number and 
here we are sending some data to that request again in the current case i am just sending a dummy data so when our first data uh, when our first request comes i will send one if a second request comes i will send two so on and so forth so that will be my response if anybody tries to connect to me i'll just respond with a number so that's why this i is initialized to one and each time we get a, a new connection request i will be incremented so this integer we are converting it into string and we are calling this function send data uh, which is similar to send command but uh, under send data you can see few more things are there so whenever you are sending a response to a request first you need to send this command at plus cap send followed by to which channel number you are sending this response so that's what is given here you also have to tell how much data you want to send in bytes okay so that's why i will pass this i here which is converted into string format i will calculate the size of the string here and i am passing that information also here and after that you will have to wait for some time so 100 millisecond i am waiting and then you have to send the actual data so you can see like you are block transmit uh, i am calling and i am passing this string here byte by byte because this function it sends only one byte at a time so i am sending it after sending i am again waiting for some time after that you need to issue this command cap close so only when you close a particular channel uh, that packet will be sent to the corresponding client who are making the request so we need to issue this command after that again wait for some more time so that's what is this function is doing after that i increment and i go back and again wait for next response okay so this is how it is working it will be clearer uh, when we run the code so let me do one thing uh, let me add this line so what it does is whenever we receive any data from esp this guy will print it character by character so you can exactly see uh, what response is coming from esp once we find it out uh, we can comment it out later okay so i'm building my project and next we program so make sure you have already connected esp to ja1 so when you power on uh, you can see like there are two leds on the esp module there is a L red led which is basically showing uh, the power is good make sure that is constantly glowing there is a blue led uh, that will blink whenever esp chip is sending some data to us okay so that will be active only when some communication is happening otherwise it will remain off so make sure that red led is uh, on and let's go to run configuration we are exported to bitstream also so we can directly run and turn up them. and run Okay, so this is the total response. So let's see uh, what actually happened. So this welcome print came at the top, welcome. Okay, after that you can see this string AT, then nothing, nothing, followed by OK. Okay, so this part came as a response to this command. Okay, so when we send this command, he responded by this much. It's not only just OK. It will be 80 followed by to blank followed by OK. Uh, why that print is coming? It is again coming because we enabled this print under receive data. Okay. Once I come on this line out, this will go away. Okay. Okay. So, so here you can see I'm searching for the substring OK 
within this big string so we found okay so we set like esp detected after that we send this command this is the response for that command we found okay so we set like successfully configured a score station and that happened then we send this one and he responded by this much okay uh, the entire command followed by wi-fi connected wi-fi got so i'm searching for connected within this string okay i got connected here so we set like success successfully connected to wi-fi then we send this command and this is the response this much is the response okay so he returns the static ip for our esp module as well as the mac address of our esp module we are interested only in the ip part so you can see what i am doing uh, i am searching for this code here so we will come here after that i am searching for zero to nine any digit or dot so we will reach till here and that part i will print followed by ip address so that's what you are seeing here after that cap mux he responded by okay but i didn't check it because if this much work that command will of course work if you want you can add that also here here we started the server and again i am not checking the response maybe ideally we should check i will add that code also and we are just printing started server and he came to this loop and he is stuck in this loop for ever make sense okay now let's try to connect to our server from a client okay so you can take any web browser maybe in next tutorial uh, we will add more features so that we can do some controlling so for this tutorial what we can do is we can just take a web browser you can use your phone also if it is connected to the same wi-fi and use this ip address whatever he gave and just type it there as soon as i typed it okay that came here you can see so it was here and after that you can see this is the response so you can see uh, plus ipd followed by zero so he will hide the ip address of my uh, computer whatever is connecting here all the details and he will just give me a channel number here zero so whenever i am responding i should respond to that channel number so let's see so you can see like i got one here okay so to that channel number i send one and here you can see all these responses that's why it looks cluttered i will say like i need to send how many bytes i'll say like i need to send one byte and i will send this data and i will close it okay so that's what you, you are seeing here 80 plus eapc 01 that means i need to send one byte to channel zero and i sent it uh, this response is coming from here him esp module that he received it send okay then i send the command to close it so he closed the connection that is when I got one. Make sense? So if I try to connect again, here yeah, this time it is three, it is four, five. You will see like sometimes uh, we will be missing some numbers here because uh, browser will be opening multiple connections to ESP. He will try to connect uh, multiple connection, parallel connection, but our code as of now, uh, once we get a request, we are not checking for any further request until this request is completely served. That's why uh, we will be losing some requests in between, uh, which will make those I value to increment without that data being sent. But again, this is a good demo to show like how we can communicate. Now I'll just comment this line out so that we can get a cleaner picture so I'm just commenting out so before programming make sure you power cycle your board because since ESP is already connected to Wi-Fi if you try to connect again he will say like uh, error 
so that case is not taken care of here so just power cycle the board each time you rerun the code okay so let me rerun so you can see welcome esp detected successfully configured a station now he's waiting 10 seconds to connect to our wi-fi he connected he gave us the ip address uh, once you connect next time onwards it might be the same ip there won't be any change so when you run it okay no print will come here now he will just respond to our request okay so in the next tutorial we will improve it we will put it into proper driver structure and we can add features like we can remotely control our led we can check for our switch position maybe we can uh, check for the on chip temperature voltage whatever you want uh, remotely through a client as long as your client or the browser whatever you use and our esp they are connected to the same wi-fi network okay thank you